Good morning. Coming from day three of my White Horse Trail. And uh, it's a chilly one this morning. It's uh, a cold easterly wind and uh, I'm just wondering when spring is finally going to arrive because the weather forecast for this week was that it was going to warm up. Well, there's no sign of that happening just yet. Forecast about 12 degrees today, feels like 9 or 10. Uh, which is okay, it's good, great walking temperature. But, uh, and I was comfortable in the tent last night. But uh, getting out of the tent and getting going, yeah, it's a bit chilly this morning. Anyway, day three. Um, I kept both devices last night, as I said, and uh, now I'm back on the Kettenhaven Canal and uh, heading towards the Alton Barnes White Horse. This is an interesting white horse. This is the Alton Barnes white horse, which was cut in 1812 at the expense of the landowner, Mr. Robert Pyle of Manor Farm. His first contractor fled with an advance payment of 20 pounds after drawing a sketch of the horse. And when this contractor was eventually found, he was hung for that crime and other crimes. In 2010, the horse underwent a major renovation overseen by the landowner, Tim Carson and the Alton Barnes Parish Council and 150 tonnes of fresh chalk were delivered by helicopter and then volunteers used the chalk to replenish the surface of this particular figure. Lunchtime on day three of my White Horse Trail and uh, what a great day. Left Devizes this morning, quite early. Walked along the Kennet and Avon Canal and stopped at all Cannings where there was a village shop. Had a cup of coffee, filled up my water bottles and then walked onto Alton Barnes where the White Horse was located. From there I've climbed up onto the Downs and reached the Wandsdyke. This area is very familiar to me. I used to live in Froome in Somerset and spent a fair bit of time on these hills over the years. No one truly knows when the one's like was built or for what reason, but the consensus is that it was built around about the 5th or 6th century AD, probably built by ancient Britons who were either defending or wished to create a demarcation line against the Anglo-Saxons who were coming from the east. From here, I'm walking down towards Avery via Silbury Hill. Silbury Hill was built, believed, about 2,400 years BC don't think there's any burials there. When you look at the size of it, bear in mind when it was built, it would have taken one gargantuan effort to have built Silbury Hill. From there I shall walk past Avebury and beyond the UNESCO World Heritage Site and at some point I'll put my tent down uh, when the time is right. But, uh, today just enjoying it. It's a cool wind, so I've got my coat on, but other than that the views are far-reaching and uh, it's just a great day.
Cher Hill White Horse, and this horse was cut under the direction of Dr. Allsop of Khan, also known as the Mad Doctor, who shouted instructions over a megaphone from the main road in 1780. It's situated under an ancient earthwork called Oldbury Castle, the ramparts of which I've just walked round. It's not linked to any previous hill figures, and its eye, four feet across, was once filled with upturned bottles which sparkled in the sunlight. Cracking day today. Really enjoyed myself uh, on day three of my White Horse Trail, and I'm in my tent now, obviously, and um, just had my dinner. Savoury beef rice with a starter of uh, tomato soup, pita breads. I've had fruit and nut, chocolate, and uh, finished off a malt loaf for my my dessert as well and uh, I'll be washed down now with them. a cup of real coffee courtesy of Claire. Tomorrow uh, I've worked out I've got 31 miles to get back to Pusey from where I'm currently located so tomorrow uh, we'll see how I get on I should be doing at least 20 miles uh, hopefully a little bit more and that will then uh, leave me very little to do on Friday morning to get into Pusey. I understand there's some rain coming on Friday morning so uh, it'd be nice to just have a few miles to do to get into the um, into the town to finish but uh, really enjoy today cracking day do it all again tomorrow well good morrow and welcome to day four of my white horse trail walk and it's a chilly one this morning but the sun is out it took me a little bit longer to get out of my tent this morning because i dawdled because uh, it was really snug in under my quilt as I had my breakfast and listened to the news, but today I've got some agricultural land to cross this morning. And then at some stage I'm going to get to an Iron Age hill fort and then later cross the Ridgeway National Trail at Penn Hill before heading across to Fifield Down, a location of sarsen stones that I understand some of which were taken to Stonehenge. And then depending on how I'm faring, I may even get as far as Marlborough and beyond to camp for a short walk into Pusey tomorrow. So the sun is shining, still a cool easterly wind, but uh, another glorious day beckons. Difficult to get a good view of this white horse. This is the Broadtown White Horse. I had a reasonable view of it when I was coming through the village of Broadtown, but it was too far away for me to record, so got a bit closer, but you can see the vegetation's in the way. Anyway, this is a small white horse which was cut in 1863 but was lost until the 1990s. The horse is regularly scoured by the Broadtown White Horse Restoration Society, which was formed in 1991. I think this is the best view I'm going to get of this horse. This is the Hackpen Hill White Horse. The horse was cut in 1837 by the parish clerk of Broadhinton to commemorate the coronation of Queen Victoria. And where that clump of trees is, is where the Ridgeway National Trail is, and I'm walking up there now and then turning right onto the National Trail.
not going to go any closer because this is Marlborough Private School. I think this is where Kate Middleton went. And this is the final white horse on the trail. I don't want to film with all the girls playing tennis. So this is Wiltshire's smallest horse and was designed in 1804 by William Canning, a boy at Mr. Greasley's Academy in Marlborough and cut into Gran Granham Hill above the River Kennet by the boys of the school. That's it then, that's the last white horse and from now it's just up and over the hill about 11 miles back to Pusey. Well good morning and good morning from day five of my white horse trail. Camped in some wonderful woods last night, about three miles the Pusey side of Marlborough and I think in another week or so the bluebells in this wood will be absolutely immense. I, I don't think I've ever seen a wood with such an extensive array of bluebells. It's amazing. But it's uh, about five to six. Really really quiet night again. And, um, just waking my breakfast, a cup of coffee, um, granola, and some warm water, and uh, shall head off. I've got about seven or eight miles to do to get into Pusey, uh, which means I'll get an early train uh, back home uh, for today. So uh, that's the plan. More or less downhill on the way. Go cross over the Wands Dyke again. Uh, go for a place called Gopher Wood. and down into Pusey. Reflections on the White Horse Trail? I have enjoyed it. Um, it's not my kind of walking that I would really go out to do. I really enjoyed day three, really enjoyed day three and, and even though I knew that terrain quite well from having lived in this area, it's where I used to go walking quite a lot, uh, it was good to be back. Yesterday was pretty good as well, um, from Chair Hill, um, the agricultural area that I walked through to Broadtown uh, was, was okay actually, I quite enjoyed it, and uh, going through Fifield Down was nice. I was a bit disappointed with the uh, terrain down to Marlborough, it was just alongside um, some gallops, and uh, it was a broad track all the way, but it was easy walking. The weakest part of the route was definitely from Bratton across to Devizes and I was really grateful that day that my friend Claire walked with me. Um, pretty muddy, not the best maintained parts on the trail. Um, and going back to day one, uh, actually in hindsight it was okay. I, I just got fed up with that broad track for quite a long time but there were extensive views uh, which I could enjoy. Um, very little high descent on this walk, so if you're new to backpacking, it's a good one to try out. There's plenty of accommodation options if you don't want to wild camp. If you are going to wild camp, you're going to have to be stealthy. Um, I have been. I've used woodland every single time to camp. Um, but it's doable. Uh, water could be an issue. Um, there are plenty of water troughs around where you can filter water from, but what I've done is I've gone into coffee shops, bought a coffee, or as of yesterday I went to a pub, and people are always very happy to fill your water bottles up for you, so it's never an issue. So I would recommend the White Horse Trail, 94 miles, um, pretty gentle walking, uh, some historic locations to walk through with Avery, Wandsdyke, Silbury Hill, etc. Um, so one that uh, I would recommend, but for me, Seven or eight miles now back to Pusey, and I'm, uh, I'm finished.